Welcome to the Sample Chapter Podcast, the show where authors read a sample chapter from one of their books. Here's your host, Jason A. Meiske. Hello, 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 my friends. Welcome to episode 51 of the Sample Chapter Podcast. My name is Jason A. Meiske. I'm a thriller author and I am your host here on the show where authors read a sample chapter from one of their books. Thank you so much for coming back in. If you're a subscriber, then clearly you have good taste. (laughs) Uh, Because as a subscriber, the show gets downloaded right into your device and just uh, shows up automatically every week. Uh, If you're interested in subscribing, I would really appreciate that. You could hit that little, check that little box and subscribe to the show. You get to hear a new author every week with amazing stories. And I got to tell you, this week is no exception. We have a real treat for you. I am I am beyond humbled and ecstatic to talk about the author coming up. You know, you saw her name on the uh, on the, <laughs> I almost said the marquee up front. But that's not quite right. You know, we're not a movie theater, uh, but you saw her name on the episode list, and I'm just oh my gosh, I can't wait. But first off, I should remind everybody where you can find us online. So we do have our uh, Facebook and Twitter for Sample Chapter Podcast. You can find us on either one of those. If you would like to reach out to us, best place to do that would be SampleChapterPodcast at gmail.com. So you can use any of these methods if you are interested in somebody that you would like to uh, come on the show. For instance, this past week I was up at Independence, Missouri, Half Price Books, having a little talk with the manager there, Shiloh. Shiloh, how you doing, man? Big shout out to you. I love the store. And Shiloh wants me to uh, try and reach out to Jim Butcher. So I'm going to do what I can, buddy. I will uh, have I've sent off an email and uh, we'll see what happens. If you are an author and you're interested in coming on the show, then yes, by all means, reach out to me. Let me know that you'd like to come on. And uh, yeah, we'll set something up. I'd be happy to have you on. As always, the only caveat I have is that your book must be a published book. It must be available to the public so that that way... After your reading and the audience likes it, they can go out and pick up a copy for themselves. I know I do it. <laughs> I finally had to grab a Kindle Unlimited account so that way I could download books a little bit faster. And I'm having a blast. I, I've yet to find a bad book uh, from the show. I love all of the books. I, I've been reading so many amazing books from from the incredible authors who have been, you know, that, that I've just been truly blessed to have on this show. And, uh, you know, I look forward to the future with, with more. Now, with, uh, with that, make sure, as a, uh, as a reader, make sure that uh, whenever you do finish a book, go in and leave a review. Amazon, Goodreads, wherever it is that you got your book, don't forget to go back in and leave a review. And, you know, if you ever find a book because of this show and uh, you feel led to write in your review that, hey, I found, I found this book because of the Sample Chapter podcast you know, then you are a kind and wonderful soul, and I would forever be grateful. (laughs) So, anyway, so moving on, uh, I do also want to let everybody know in advance that, uh, you know, I have quite the backlist right now of author interviews saved up. I've been doing a lot of editing, getting things prepared, and, uh, you know, this week seems like a really, really good week to uh, go ahead and do a bonus episode. So, Today, you know, it's Tuesday the 5th. We've got this episode up today. Later this week, uh, I haven't decided yet. Uh, maybe Thursday, maybe Friday, uh, I'm going to drop a, a bonus episode with another author. So make sure you subscribe so that way you get it downloaded right away. But of course, if you're on our social media, you're going to see me share it on there as well. So you can like it and share it with friends. Uh, but yeah, look for that later on this week. Another uh, fantastic author. And I can't wait to share you share that with you. But I'm going to keep things short this week. So uh, for right now, let's get on over to a word from our sponsor. You Store All out of Warrensburg, Missouri is the premium place for all of your self-storage needs. Whether you're looking for non-climate control or climate control, they have both. And when I say climate control, I do mean that it is air-conditioned, heated, and it has dehumidification. Plus, the climate control buildings are even locked up outside office hours. And then they work with the customers uh, to get access after hours, but that entire facility is fenced in, it's gated, you get your own private gate code that's never reissued, and both facilities are monitored by more than 50 cameras 
soon to be around 60 or even more. Uh, they've got so many cameras. The place is so tight and secure. There's not a better place for you to store your goods. So make sure you go and check them out online at ustoreall.net. That is the letter U S T O R A L L dot net. Yeah, hey, thanks again, you store all for being our sponsor for the last year and uh, going into the year ahead. Uh, if anybody out there, if any other places out there are interested in a sponsor spot, please make sure you reach out to us at samplechapterpodcast at gmail.com. Moving on, our author this week. Yeah, I, I can't hold it in any longer. I mean, it's Tosca Lee. We are talking award winning. New York Times best-selling, the queen of psychological twists. She's also the author of other titles such as Iscariot, The Legend of Sheba, Demon, a memoir, The Story of Eve. There's also her duology, The House of, of uh, Bathory, which includes The Progeny, <laughs> soon to be a TV series on the CW, and uh, the f- sequel to that, Firstborn. She's also uh, written a couple of books with New York Times bestseller Ted Decker, uh, which is the Books of Mortals, that includes Forbidden, Mortal, and Sovereign. Oh my gosh, the one and only Tosca Lee. I had an amazing talk with her. And I mean, I you, you're going to hear talk when, I'm, when we're talking, you're going to hear she is so humble, she is so down to earth. We talk about how that when she was uh, wanting to be a writer, you know, she looks at books as wanting them to be like a roller coaster, going up and down and feeling like you've really been through something. You know, we talk about her writing habits, her support system at home, the incredible home life that she has, you know, and and the inspiration behind her latest book, which is The Line Between. Uh, We we just, we have such an amazing talk. Um, You know, what more can I say? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know what else I could say. I I just, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of gushing right now. I had a wonderful time. I was blown away by the uh, the invitation to get to uh, speak to her, and so to her her representatives. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. And uh, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and get us on over to our interview with Miss Tosca Lee. Greetings, guys and gals. Welcome to another outstanding episode of the Sample Chapter Podcast. I am I am blown away. I am completely humbled. I am in awe right now. I am in the presence of Tosca Lee, our guest this week, Miss <laughs> Lee. <laughs> thank you so much for joining the well, show. Well, thank you for making me feel so good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's uh, my pleasure. Go ahead and let the audience know, uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Oh, gosh. Um well, I am a writer, so I, I guess that's kind of what we're here to talk about. <laughs> I write, uh, I just had my 10th published novel come out on Tuesday, and it is a thriller. I have also written uh, historical fiction. I live in Nebraska, and I have four stepchildren these days. I just got married three years ago, um, and I write upstairs in the old part of the farmhouse where I live and I I call it the attic but it's the old part of the farmhouse my husband's a farmer and I don't know what else to tell you I'm I'm working on the (laughs) sequel to the book that the book that came out on Tuesday is called The Line Between and I'm working on the sequel I'm doing copy edits today that were due like three days ago so that's what what I'm up to today. Wonderful yeah (laughs) and the the latest book The Line Between it's been Amazing. I've been just devouring it. Uh, I well, thank you. finally got a chance to open it up uh, yesterday and it was just, yeah, it's just been chapter after chapter and going through it today and uh, reading it when my boss isn't looking, I'm pulling it up on my phone. So yeah, <laughs> well, this thank is, you. oh, well, thank you. This is fantastic. I love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> now I was looking through uh, uh, reading up a little bit and finding out uh, you, you published your first piece in third grade. Now that that fascinates me. Can you tell us about that? Sure. So you, you <laughs> have done your homework. Um, well, okay. Let's let's go back in time here. So <laughs> I'm in third grade up until even around the time I was trying to publish my first novel. Newsletters were still printed and sent to real mailboxes. So in third grade, my teacher, one of my school teachers, had suggested I write a story about the death of my beloved bulldog, Oliver. 
So I did, and it was printed in this pet lover's newsletter. And so that was my very first article. And it was very dramatic. It was very <laughs> dramatic. But um, yeah, so I just did it, and it wasn't a thing. And I also wrote some stuff for some, you know, young authors conferences, you can like, you know, enter contests and stuff like that. But I never really th thought of writing as a thing when I was in grade school, or even junior high or high school, I, I really wanted to be a ballerina. And that was my all consuming passion. So that was the path. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw where you had been writing and then you got into dancing before uh, that came to an end. And then uh, and then you just went back to writing that that's I mean it looks like yeah. it worked out really really well though <laughs> well it was not expected I didn't really plan that to happen that way I, I just happened to be having a conversation during spring break my freshman year when I was in college uh, with my father and I was talking about how great books are like roller coasters and you know even if it's, it's it may not be a thriller but it may be an emotional roller coaster because the characters are so amazing um or whatever it is and i just blurted out that day um i think i'd like to write a book because i wanted to know if if i could create a roller coaster the way that other authors had for me so mm. um, my dad made me a really cool deal that day uh, i was supposed to spend my summer working at a bank and my dad said, I will pay you what you would have made working at the bank if you will spend your summer writing a novel and do it full time like a job. And so I did. I wrote my first novel that summer. And it was terrible. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's in my basement still. So and everybody's like, why don't you publish that? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, well, there's there's plenty of us, myself included, that uh, that first story probably shouldn't have been published but uh <laughs> I, i'm going to go along with the uh the adage that uh, oh this wasn't my first uh, my first was when i was younger but we'll right, see how that right. works out yeah <laughs> well it sounds like so that working that summer and and treating the uh the writing career like a job it sounds like that's mm -hmm. what kind of inspired your uh, your writing schedule which i hear is quite epic uh yeah. up, up to 20 hours a day uh now, how well, do you how do you find that balance between work and family when you're when you're writing that much? Well, you know, between books, I may not be writing even at all. So, um, I I tend to kind of procrastinate a lot until I know I've really got to start. I, you know, my books are contracted with my publisher, so I know that I need to get them in at a certain uh, point. So, uh, after procrastinating for a, enough time, I freak out, and then I panic. And I start and I know, you know, at this point in my career, I know roughly how long it's going to take me. And I don't write quite as heavily at the beginning because at the beginning I write a lot slower and I may, you know, I may struggle just to get uh, 250 or 500 words at the very beginning. And, and, you know, that's a, a page or two. Mm -hmm. So, and then towards the end when you're kind of barreling, you know, towards that final gate and the deadlines looming, that's when the hours kind of pile on. And as far as balance, you know, those last few weeks, I don't really have a lot of good balance. I would say my family knows that I'm working and I'm up at all hours. And uh, my husband is very supportive, you know, will run things and cook for me. And, and that's kind of how it goes. And, and, and that's how it works between both of us too, though. My husband's a farmer and, you know, he's got his busy seasons as well with planting and, and harvesting. You and I both live in the Midwest, so we understand Mm -hmm. um, these things. And so, you know, there are times when I'm taking care of everything and, you know, cooking and running food out to the field and stuff. And that's just kind of how it works real well between us. Yeah. I was going to say it's, it's, it's very much when, when you treat the writing like a job, it's a, very much, we all have those moments where the career is calling for a lot of our time and yeah. it, it doesn't matter what your job is, whether it's farming or, uh, you know, working, uh, you know, anywhere you name it. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. times where that's that's something it's nice to have somebody that you can go back and forth with and and depend on each other. So it sounds like a Absolutely. great sounds like a great home life. Oh, he's I just I'm so lucky to have such a wonderful spouse and partner. So um yeah. So he, <laughs> he enables me to to do this. So I'm very fortunate. Oh, uh, that's fantastic. So with with the, this is your 10th book that's just come out, uh The Line Between 
the stories and the characters that you come up with, where, where do, where does some of this inspiration come from? <laughs> well, this one, um, actually it came from the headlines. There's, I, I had just seen some really interesting headlines about um, diseases and bacteria and different things that were melting in the permafrost. And uh, this was a couple years ago. And in Siberia, there had been a reindeer carcass that had thawed and it, it was full of anthrax. And so when it thawed, the, a nearby village got very sick and a young boy actually died. And there's a lot of interesting articles about what scientists, you know, think. I mean, they're, they're, it's not that they think, they're positive that there are very interesting and possibly very scary things in the permafrost that can return. So I was preparing for a meeting with my publisher in New York and, uh, you know, to talk about next directions. And I had a short list of ideas. And so this idea of this, you know, kind of scary disease coming out of the permafrost was one of them. But the other one was the story of a young woman who had been kicked out of a, a doomsday cult and was trying to start over in a world that she had been taught all her life to believe was evil and what it was like to see that world through her eyes and what it would be like for her to try to find beauty and grace in it. And so I took these, this list of, there were other ones on there too, um, to the meeting, the story ideas to the meeting. And my publisher, as we were talking about these two ideas said, I like these two ideas, why don't you put them together? Oh. So I hadn't really thought of that before. But as the reviews have started rolling in, readers have really liked this kind of juxtaposition of these two storylines. And I wish I could take credit for it, but I really can't. So I'm just really fortunate that, that he said that. <laughs> well, that's, that's very nice of you, of you to you know, give some credit out there. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's still up to you to write. And mm -hmm. I, I, you know, your main character, Winter Roth, I'm, I'm really riveted by her story and mm -hmm. the, the back and forth. Uh, play with uh, her as an adult one chapter and then her as a child or as a younger person in that group Here, going back and forth I'm just I can't stop uh, from chapter mm, to chapter it's it's wonderful character development thank so, you where did you get your information for for like the cults so did you did you go into any cults or anything I did not um, I know people who have come out of um, situations and organizations that have been uh, called cults by other people. And I, I have been fascinated by cults. And, and I think a lot of people are actually fascinated by cults. And so I did do quite a bit of research about them. You can have a whole spectrum as far as cults go and, you know, what they believe and what they do. But, you know, they have a lot of you know, things in common. And, and top of that list is a very charismatic leader. There's a very charismatic leader like that in the story. His name's Magnus. He's the antagonist. Um, but it's, it's been really fascinating and, and kind of scary um, to read about that. And also fascinating and scary too, to read about the disease stuff. So um, I enjoy research. It's something that I really enjoyed about writing historical fiction and and even my thrillers before this, which had a slight historical storyline in the background as well. So I just think it's a lot of fun. It, it is. That's one of the benefits is of being an author is we get a chance to kind of almost live a thousand lives uh, through, Absolutely. Our, through the research and stuff. What, uh, what has been one of your favorite things to research so far? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I wrote a story, I wrote a, a historical, I mean, okay, so everything I'm doing at that time is my favorite at the time. <laughs> but when I look back and I think of things that have had a lot of impact on me personally, one of my favorite things is um, doing the research for my book Iscariot, which was the story of Judas Iscariot, the infamous betrayer of Jesus mm. Christ. And so for that, I went to Israel and got to go to a lot of places that I had really wanted to go for a long time. And I spent years on that research and I had the opportunity to talk to um, some amazing scholars, amazing theologians, amazing academics, and just a really dive in deep. So for, you know, so many aspects of the history, the political history, the everyday history to what people ate and what they 
what they wore. And I even spent a whole day researching first century Middle Eastern latrines because <laughs> I had a scene and, and it turned out to only be one line in the end. But for a whole day, I followed rabbit trails about this stuff. So I like the rabbit trails. I think that's kind of fun. But that was probably the most significant for me personally. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you... Uh... Like so many others of us, uh, do you find yourself uh, going down the rabbit hole on something completely different from what you started? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> and I'm really scared at some point the government's <clears throat> going to like track my browser. <laughs> 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 because no. I'm sure that I look highly suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm an yeah. author. I'm an author. I'm not interested in yeah, viruses. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, so the line between just came out, uh, see by the time this airs it would be a week ago and it's doing amazing. I was looking at the numbers earlier. You're still in the top hundred on Amazon. Uh, the book's doing fantastic. And, uh, I saw the, uh, the recent uh, news that it's being developed for TV. Congratulations. Yay, yay. Thank you. That's always fun. Um, I, it's a really long process, you know, working on, TV adaptations or movie adaptations. So I always try to, you know, just continue ahead with my work and let those things play out as they will and be helpful as much as I can along the way. But it is very fun to have those in the works and, and see where they go and what happens. And it's, it's very educational too. It's, it's fascinating the whole process. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and you're making a habit of this because I saw where this is your second <laughs> one, the, the progenies well, coming to CW. <laughs> It's that's that's really just a lo very lucky for me because I've got a great team working on it and they're wonderful people. So I'm just very fortunate to have some people working on these books that believe in these stories and have championed them for years, actually. So it's been years. <laughs> Well, it, it looks incredible. I know I can't wait to uh, to check out the shows and, of course, to go Thank back. Thank you. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, of course, uh, with, with some of my writing friends who, uh, when they found out I was getting to talk to you, I know now I need to go back and read The Progeny because uh, they were pounding me like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, you got to read this. This isn't Oh, well, please do. <laughs> so, yes, I'm going to have to go back. And, of course, everybody listening, you need to go back. Let's start uh, reading back to the library and it's, it's highly recommended. Miss Lee would recommend all of these, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I highly recommend them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so now what, uh, where would be the best place for people to, to find you and follow you? Um, you know, the best place is my website, which is toscalee.com. So that is T-O-S-C-A-L-E-E.com. And then that's a good jumping off place for any of the social media or any other places like BookBub or whatever. Um, so go there first. And um, yeah, there's some fun stuff there too. So please do check it out. Yeah, and it's a great website. I, I got to read up about your your love of bacon. And, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I, many... we've got a new dog. We've got this new giant German Shepherd. And so this German Shepherd has kind of invaded my social media. Like <laughs> because he's so huge and people ask about him now. So. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's uh what's his name his name is timber and he's i he's 10 or 11 months old now and i'd say he's probably at least 130 pounds oh my gosh he's a dire wolf yeah <laughs> yes wonderful yeah well uh so today we're going to be hearing from uh the line between what uh what can you tell us about uh, what we're going to be hearing well, as I said before, the line between uh, combines really two storylines, but it's the same central character. So this is a story of a young woman named Winter Roth, who is 22 years old. And at the start of the book, she's just been expelled from a, a doomsday cult on the American prairie in Iowa, actually. And so she's um, being let, let out in the world and she has to start over again. And as this is happening, um, a, a pandemic is sweeping across the U.S. that came out of the melting permafrost. And so for winter, it does really look like the apocalypse that she's been taught her whole life to expect. Oh, my gosh. So that is the story. Well, I'm, I'm loving it. And uh, I highly recommend it to everybody out there listening. you got to grab the line between. I'm, I'm loving it. And you're going to love it, too. And I can't wait to, uh, yeah, one of these days to uh, check it out on, on TV. This is 
<laughs> really cool. I, I am, like I said, I am blown away. I'm thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show. Absolutely. And, uh, I, I just, I, I can't thank you enough. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's my pleasure completely. Well, I will hand the floor over to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Tosca Lee with The Line Between. Thank you. So I'm going to read you chapter one, and this takes place in Iowa in September. Conventional wisdom dictates that there is an insurmountable divide, an entire dimension of eternity and space between heaven and hell. Lucifer managed to take the trip in nine days, at least according to Paradise Lost. That equates to a distance of about 25,920 miles, assuming standard rules of velocity. But I can tell you it's closer to a foot and a half, the distance of a step, give or take an inch. Magna stands near the gatehouse, shirt sleeves rolled up, collar unbuttoned beneath his brown vest. He nods to the guardian in the booth and the industrial gate begins its mechanical slide. There's a small door to the side of it, just large enough to admit a single person. But I won't be leaving by the narrow gate. My departure must be a spectacle, a warning to those assembled behind me. I can feel their eyes against my back like hot iron. The glare is mottled by anger and fear. Sadness, maybe, but above all gratitude that they are not me. Two guardians stand at my sides, ready to forcibly walk me out in case I balk or my 22-year-old legs give out beneath me. I glance at the one to my right and swear he looks impatient. Hungry, maybe. It's just before lunchtime. I'm crossing into eternal damnation, and all he's thinking about is an egg salad sandwich, and not even a good one. It's Wednesday, Sabbath by the solar calendar. Rosella is managing the kitchen, and that pious sandwich is full of chickpeas without a single real egg in it. The gate comes to a stop with an ominous clang. The road beyond is paved with gravel, a gray part in the sea of native grass strewn with gold and purple flowers, in stark contrast to the carefully and beautifully manicured grounds behind me. A meadowlark sings somewhere nearby as a combine rumbles in the distance. I grip the plastic bag of my sparse belongings, a change of underwear, my baby book stripped of its photos, a stone the color of sea glass. Sweat drips down the inside of my blouse as I stare out at that barrel scape, at that barren drive, through untouched prairie that leads to the road half a mile away. A car idles at that corner waiting for me. Don't look, don't glance back. That's pride talking. A voice so faint this last decade, I wasn't aware it was still in there. Still, I turn. Not because I need a parting glance at the compound I called home for the last 15 years or even Jacqueline, my sister, but because I need to see her, my niece, truly. I scan the nearly 500 select assembled across the broad drive until I find her small form near the front, her hand in Jacqueline's, curls wafting around her head in the breeze. I'd planned to mouth the words, I love you, to tug my right ear lobe in our secret sign so she'll remember me long after she's told she can never speak my name again, to fight back tears at the sight of hers, to combat her confusion with love. Instead, my heart stops. She's glaring at me her face pink, growing redder by the instant. I open my mouth to say what I don't know, but before I can, she tears her hand from my sister's and runs away, disappearing into the assembly. Truly, I gasp and stagger after. The guardians grab my arms. No, wait, truly. I twist against them, plastic bag swinging against my thigh. I can't leave her like this, not like this. It wasn't supposed to happen this way. None of it was. I shift my gaze to my sister where she stands beside the six elders. Her cheeks are hollow, features chiseled far beyond her 27 years. What did you say to her? I shout as I'm jerked back around and hauled toward Magnus who stands before the open gate, this side of that invisible line. Winter raw, Magnus says, loudly enough for those behind us to hear, which means he's basically shouting right at me. Gone the brown and gray scruff that was on his chin yesterday. I can smell his aftershave from here. Please, I whisper in the space between us, trying to snag his gaze, but he stares past me as though I were a stranger. Because of your deliberate, prolonged disobedience, his words carry to those behind me, even as the breeze whisks mine away. Just let me say goodbye. Including the sins of idolatry, 
thievery, and the willful desire to harm the eternal future of those most vulnerable among us, because you will not hear the pleas of the brethren and refuse repentance. You are hereby delivered to Satan for the destruction of your flesh. I hear the words as though from a distance. I've seen and heard them spoken before. I just never thought they'd be aimed at me. So this is it. There will be no goodbyes. And I realize I hate him. Magnus lifts up his hands. And so we renounce your fellowship and cast you out of our holy number, even as we pray for the restoration of your salvation, which you forfeit this day. Now, as it is bound on earth, so let it be bound in heaven. He lowers his arms as the assembly echoes his words and says more quietly as he meets my eyes at last, you have broken our hearts, Winter. He moves away and before I can respond, the guardians walk me to the line as I glance back one more time, but truly is gone. I face the gravel drive before me. One step, that's all it takes to span the distance of eternity. Welcome to hell. And that was chapter one from The Line Between, the latest thriller from New York Times bestselling author, the lovely Tosca Lee. Hey, I'm in the middle of reading the book myself. I'm about halfway through and even though I can't read it every day, when I do, I can't put it down. You're going to love it. The book is riveting, and uh, I can see why they call her the queen of psychological twists. Don't forget to follow the links in the show notes so you can follow her website, check everything out online. Don't forget to follow our friends at Pop Goes the Culture Podcast. Don't forget to leave us a rating as well uh, on whatever service you're listening to us on, and subscribe, because if you are a subscriber, then each week you get to hear us come back with a new author, a new book, and a new sample chapter. Have a good week, everybody.